Well, y'all, uh, <clears throat> this is this is a happy moment for the mansion and the state and the mansion commission and the Audubon Society. Uh, Peggy and I have been, when we first got here, we thought that the place is, is beautiful. And with the, the native plants, we need more of them and more native birds. But our view that she's been working so hard on is to see to it that this mansion and the grounds and the buildings and all that are in this nine acres are, are just perfect. Because this is, we see it as our front porch. And when people come and visit, and a lot of them do from other places, we want them to leave here thinking South Carolina must be the most marvelous place on earth because just look at where we have been. So the, the work that the commission and the Audubon Society has done is a, a great step in that direction, and we'll, 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 we will achieve that a very ambitious goal. But we've got all the, all the raw materials. All we have to do is just fine-tune it. So uh, I want to thank you, thank you uh, Sharon, for the work that you've done and uh, the Audubon Society and all your members for so many years, but uh, especially on behalf of the almost five million happy, proud South Carolinians for what you're doing here in this show place, this front porch for the people of the state. Yes, Hi, I'm Sharon Richardson. I'm the Executive Director of Audubon South Carolina. We're the state arm of National Audubon Society. We have 1.4 million members nationwide, and one of our biggest initiatives that we have is trying to get people and leaders to plant native plants. And we are so honored to be a part of this, and we are grateful to the governor and the first lady for being such a leader in the state. We have been working with our partners, the South Carolina Native Plant Societies, the Gardens, the Clubs of South Carolina. So there are thousands and thousands of people around the state that are working hard to restore native plants in our urban environments and just do small things that really help the birds. And it's really, uh, the birds need it. You know, in South Carolina, there are over 400 birds that find their home in South Carolina, either during their breeding season or on their way back and forth through their wintering grounds. And everywhere they stop, they face threats. And so with the more that we can do to restore the native plants in our areas while they're migrating or during their breeding habitat, the more that the, we benefit the birds. So we're really, really proud to be, you know, have the governor's mansion be a demonstration pilot project to inspire all the South Carolinians and the 700,000 people that feed birds in South Carolina. And we are just so proud to be a part of this. And we are really, really excited to share our, um, I'd like to do a couple of specific thanks and call outs to our staff, our volunteers, our cha Audubon chapters. And we also, um, Aaron Stevens, who is here, who was the landscaped architect who designed everything to make sure that the native plants reflect the grandeur and the theme of what the governor's mansion represents for all South Carolinians and the nation. And we also want to um, acknowledge Mike Dawson, who was brilliant enough to make our replicas for um, these birdhouses or replicas of the governor's mansion and the Lace House and the Boylston House. And we hope that they are inhabited by the state bird, the Carolina Wren, and we hope that they bring you um, prosperity and enjoy. We hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, I have a, a, an act uh, in Representative Gary Clary is here, who, uh, besides being an old dear friend of mine, is an old uh, is a friend of the people of South Carolina, doing a fabulous job with your leadership in the in the state house, and we appreciate it very much, and appreciate your support of, of this effort as well. And I'd like to read this this act to amend the code of South Carolina. Uh, 1976 by adding sections to declare the third week in October of each year as South Carolina Native Plant Week and encourage all South Carolinians to recognize the essential value and importance of the native plants of South Carolina to our state's history, economic landscape, and environment. And it reads as follows. And it's, uh, it's short, but it's wonderful. Whereas South Carolina's native plants provide unparalleled and unique, iconic, economic, artistic, historical, and environmental value to both the history and future of our state, and whereas South Carolina is home to tremendously rich and diverse plant life, containing over 4,000 native plant species, subspecies, and varieties of which 21 specific species are considered federally threatened or endangered, and whereas the planting, restoration, preservation, and cultivation 
of South Carolina's indigenous plants provide a natural link to the wild land areas of the present and past while introducing peace people to their beauty and instilling a greater understanding and appreciation of our state's natural heritage. Now, therefore, be enacted by the General Assembly of the State of South Carolina as follows. It has the section, the third week of October of each year is declared to be South Carolina Native Plant Week in South Carolina, and all South Carolinians are encouraged to recognize the essential value and importance of the native plants of South Carolina to our state's history, economic landscape, and environment. And the act takes effect upon approval of the governor, which shall come now. And if the first lady will join me at the table, Ms. McMaster. Thank you. And we'd love to come back. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.